Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You, get, you guys are the best. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, keep sharing, keep watching. We really do appreciate. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just comment on the name or comment the link and I'll be more than glad to check it out. Find us on Facebook and Instagram as Funny and Jesse. Our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Ami Did Not Answer Christian Missionaries Have No Questions on the topic. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. The Muslim Digest, uh, Mr. Dilad, I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, the Muslim Digest in August 1960, page 27. Uh, you are being quoted to say the following words. Because right now you said you never used the word Sunni in all your lectures. But here you are quoted saying this in August 1960, page 27 in the Muslim Digest. I believe that Jesus was not nailed to the cross. Since he was not taken up to the cross, the question of swimming does not arise. All right, you just want to point out he has used the word swimming. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, it looks like from 1960, the brother is following the Muslim Digest, wanting to find out what did that said and what he didn't do. Well, you're a very Those words, person. this look is an amazing thing. You come to a lecture, you listen to the man for one and a half hour, and you haven't got a single word which you can contradict. Now, in 1960 or 69, what it was, he says, that said that I didn't believe in the word that was used. In my lectures, I said, I never used the word swoon for the things that has happened. And I still stand by that. In my lectures. Did I say in my lectures? Right. Next question. Last, question. Last question for Last the night. night. First of all, I would like to apologize. Um, I don't think it's fair, you know, to interrupt. But I must admit, Certain things, you know, which were said tonight go really in my heart and move my emotions so that I can perhaps cry because I feel very much hurt because my word of God and Jesus Christ is torn actually into the dirt. Um, so sorry when I interrupted. Um, you mentioned two people during the address this evening, Joshua McDowell, with whom you had a symposium about three years ago on the 30th of August, I believe, 81, on the same topic. And you advertised quite a few, uh, you advertised this tape. And I would like to uh, encourage the audience to get hold of this tape and to listen to the fool, uh, uh, Joshua McDowell, as you put it, to the audience this evening. To listen to the sight of the fool, Joshua McDowell, who clearly explained to the people in Durban why Jesus Christ was crucified. Then I would like just at, at the end quote from you the verse which you recited to us in Arabic in English and that is Surah 45758 and because of their saying we slew the Messiah Jesus of uh, Jesus son of Mary Allah's messenger they slew him not nor crucified but it appeared unto uh, so unto them the word crucified is even used in the Quran and lo those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof they have no acknowledged no knowledge thereof save pursuit of conjecture. Right. Sorry. They slew him not of, for certain, but Allah took him up to himself. Now, Mr. Dieter, you make the statement, no one was crucified. Someone else was crucified instead of Jesus. That is Islamic teaching. And I think that is my question. Why do you actually tell people something about the Christian faith and destroy the Bible and you don't get back to your Quran. I, I would assume if I would be a Muslim, I would be utterly disappointed for this evening because I didn't get anything from this book. From this book. From this book, I got something distorted, but nothing from that. Could Sorry. you please answer this? Thank you. I started with the verse which we have just finished off with. And they said in boast that they killed Christ Jesus. Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah Jesus the son of Mary the messenger of God and they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him 
ولكن شبه لهم but it was made to appear to them so when did I say somebody was substituted did I say anything like that did I say somebody else was put on his place I said whatever you are thinking since you say you have your authorities witnesses eyewitnesses and your witnesses to the happenings I said let us examine your witnesses this is the most sensible legal thing that people do in any civilized country when you make a claim anybody makes a claim and if there is a counter claim you go to court and you present your case and your witness is being cross-examined to prove whether he's speaking the truth or false and that is actually what I did I use your witnesses your witnesses from your book and showed you that whatever you are imagining didn't happen and that's my case I close my case now either you have to refute me by telling me that a spirit has flesh and bones Jesus said the spirit has no flesh and bones and this resurrected bodies eat broiled fish and honeycomb tell me I'm prepared to listen to you but nobody has come forward yet. you keep on talking about Josh McDowell now you're talking about some tapes what has that got to do with this meeting tonight you know it's an amazing situation you are personally present here what do you want to know about Josh McDowell his lecture what he said and what he did what has that got to do with this meeting you're talking about the tape you know you're confusing the people they don't know what you're talking about you you know put forth your claim what is it what do you want you want Josh McDowell's tape I said look we don't instruct them you go and write to John Gilchrist your partner in Benoni he will give it to you why do you want it from me what is this Josh McDowell has to got to do with your question time now nothing so it's an amazing thing, you know, that you're listening for one and a half hour and there is not a thing that you can challenge me on to say that I have made a misstatement and this is wrong and prove your point. We thank everybody for having My dear come. brothers and sisters, look, here is a proof. Here is a proof. What you have to do, you master that little booklet. And I tell you, there isn't a Christian born who can stand before you. You'll find sick people. You know, they say they're born again and they'll keep on you try talking to the wall. Don't talk to the wall. The ordinary people, Allah says, Minhumul Mu'minuna, there are good people among them. Talk to them, invite them for tea, talk to them, show them the Quran, reason with them, and inshallah you'll be able to do the job. The professionals, you leave them to me at meetings like these. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أتجدن أشد الناس عداوة للذين آمنوا اليهود والذين أشركوا ولتجدن أقربهم مودة للذين آمنوا الذين قالوا إنا نصارى ذلك بأن منهم قسيسين ورهبانا وأنهم لا يستكبرون وإذا سمعوا ما أنزل إلى الرسول ترى أعينهم تفيض من الدمع مما عرفوا من الحق يقولون ربنا آمنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين I mean these Christians actually did have questions but sometimes um, I don't know sometimes the way we ask our questions hides our true question if that makes sense Especially if you're going to talk to someone and you uh, maybe pissed with what they said or not. Or how can I say? Just disagreeing with everything they're saying. Once you get there, especially if you mix it with emotions, once you get there, sometimes the way you ask something just turns out to be something else. I think to them, they had valid questions, which is always good to have a question. Even if someone has explained it, always ask when you're not satisfied with the answer and um of course he's bound to say um that they don't have questions if they're asking something that's not related to this you know because the topic here or the last question let me focus on the last question was about the crucifixion of jesus if he's explained it to you during the lecture and explains it even now what you can do is just take what he has to say and see what you can do with it go out there research on your laptop 
um, articles and you might find your answer out there other than that also I remember it was one of these uh, Islamic videos I was watching and the best advice was I've forgotten from who the best person to learn about Christianity is from a Christian the best person to learn about Islam is someone who's practicing Islam themselves him or herself you know and these conversations because this wasn't a debate should be fruitful like make you think outside your box but then if you're not open to something i think you end up missing out on a lot let me know what you guys actually think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe if there's anything you want me to react to drop it down below and i'll be more than glad to do it